Well, it's a very exciting day. It's the relaunch of Rigby's in London, bringing back a famous old name where it belongs. And with me is the managing director, Mark Newton. Hi, Mark. Mark and I are buddies. We shoot together. He's a stalker. His dad's a stalker. He spent recent years building rifles with Paul Roberts, one of the greatest gun makers and greatest hunters in the world. But Mark is quite a force in his own right. He's a dynamic young guy, and I'm sure he's going to do great things with this grand old name. Now, behind me, we've got unfinished big bore bolt rifles. Let me just grab one off the, off the rack there. Weapon is clear. And that looks to me it is. It's a 416 Rigby, that grand old caliber to go with the grand old name. And I absolutely adore this caliber myself. I've got a Rigby in production for my, my own use. You've got that great combination of power and penetration with the 416. But as usual, I'm talking about guns. And today is as much about people and the company as the guns they make. So, Mark. Tell me, give me a little information. What's this all about? Why has it all happened? Well, in the 90s, Mr. Roberts sold the company to a US firm. After 20 years in the US, it's finally come back home to London. We've worked closely with Mr. Roberts in redeveloping the brand over here, and we're really trying to take it back to its pre-war roots, before the Mauser factory was destroyed in the 40s, you know, to the classic uh, design which so many people go for. This whole new project really has started because of Mauser. Rigby's gone back to its roots. In the old days, Rigby would go to Mauser, specify guns, and they'd come to the UK, be refinished, or finished to Rigby's specifics, whether it was a 275, Rigby's would get Magnum Mauser actions as well, turn those into their famous um, big game rifles. But Mark, tell me a little of the story. This is a very new venture, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we've had the company established now for the last two months. It all started with the company coming back to London from the US. It was bought out by the LNO Group, who own Mauser, Blaser, Sauer, amongst others. And it's really been very special, Mike. We were around the table in Germany just a week ago, Mauser and myself and one of our guys designing the new 2014 Magnum Mauser action for our rifles next year. You'll hear about some of that uh, in a few months. Well, now, now, let me just stop you. That's really exciting. So there is a new Mauser action in the works. It's a 98-inspired action, is it? Correct. What we're doing is taking all of those designs from the original Mauser, the archetype to which all action, bolt-action rifles, really take a lot of their inspiration. We're taking that action and we're bringing it, you know, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Um, Rigby's were always at the forefront of uh, innovation, and this is just another example of that. And then, Mark, I'm going to ask you just to step out of shot for a moment okay. and bring over another gun that's very famous with the um, Rigby name on it. Thank you very much. The gun is clear. Again, I always prefer to check it. The 275 Rigby, aka 7x57 as used by WDM Bell, the brain surgeon, to shoot an awful lot of elephant. A very good hill rifle, not the rifle you'd advise most people to shoot elephant with. The thing with Bell, though, is he really learned the anatomy of the beast, and he could put that bullet in exactly the right place. Lesser shots, very bad idea, a small, like this, a small rifle like this for dangerous game. So this is, this is an oldish rifle. That was from the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, quite a late uh, vintage 275. Quite interestingly, we have here, I believe this one is number 54 in the Rigby book. This very rifle was the third Rigby really? 275 ever produced. Clear gun. Now, clear. The thing that fascinates me, you know when you go through the old Rigby books, one of the things you discover is that a lot of these old Rigbys were ordered with telescopic sights. And indeed there, you will see at some stage or another, maybe at the beginning, maybe later, this has been fitted with one. But it's quite surprising, even going back a hundred years or more, how many weapons, sporting weapons, were equipped with telescopic sights. So um, what are you going to do with this one? Restock it? No, this rifle is purely for our archive. It's built on an original 96 Mauser action which cocks on closing rather than the 98 system which people know today which cocks on opening. 
um, and this will go into our new museum uh, which we hope to open in the next six months. Oh that's great Mark and I'm sure that will be a fascinating place to visit. Meantime let's take a little tour have a look at some of the stuff Definitely. you're doing and it it all does look absolutely great. I mean, this is a premise that I've been visiting for many years. Um, they've been kind enough to let me park my car here outside, which is a big deal in London for a long time. And I've gone off to forays to West End gun makers, as well as talking to the lads here and getting them to make me things. But this is a very special place for me. There's a lot of atmosphere here. It's one of the great old fashioned gun shops. And the thing that's interesting is not only have you got stuff for sale, second-hand stuff, new stuff being made, but you've actually got guys in the back. You don't just have the front of shop, you've still got guys in the back making things. And that makes this a very special place, living heritage. Here is another very old friend, Karim. And I think you'd say your job spec, Karim, was you're a general rifle smith. Yes. Karim has worked on rifles of mine that I have shot charging beasts with. So we have a very good relationship. And um, I can say that what he does works, which is very important. All of this stuff made here looks beautiful, but it works as well. Alfie here is the apprentice at Rigby's and how I wish every gun company in this country had an apprentice. It used to be the norm, it's not the norm anymore. Alfie, how old are you? 17. Really? 17? You're a big lad for 17. Yeah. So what, what drew you into this? Well, uh, my dad's a um, Royal Marine. Yeah. He's been in the Marines for about 25 years and I've always been around guns and uh, this sort of thing, the outdoors hunting, fishing, that sort of thing, you know. And I met Mark for the first time and then we started talking and then things went on from there. So you're a shooter yourself? Yeah, I shoot quite a bit. Clay pigeons? Do you Clays, shoot games? I've, I've done a little bit of pigeon shooting. I've, not, I've lots of target shooting with my dad, but that's mainly it. And, and what have you actually done on, uh, what have you done so far with your career? I mean, yeah. have, have you learned, in the old days they used to give you a file and a piece of, a piece of steel and say, file that into a perfect square. Have you <laughs> done any of that sort of uh, stuff yet? Well, that, College, I did an engineering course where we uh, made quite a few different, like we made screwdrivers and things like that. Did that sort of thing. But I worked with uh, all my work experience I did for school. I worked with the Royal Marines Armour for a, a nice. week. So yeah, I took apart SAEs, sniper rifles, and G GPMGs, things like that. Really useful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you're familiar with rifles and yeah. with machine guns. Yeah. In fact, it's interesting. Quite a lot of service armourers end up being yeah. civvy armourers as yeah. well. Yeah. And I mean, it must be exciting to be part of a tradition like this. I mean, it's something special. It's you yeah. know, it's a, it's a, if you like, it's you, you're joining an elite. Your dad's a member yeah. of an elite, and now yeah. you're joining a, an elite yourself. Yep. Yeah. 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 So different. So, so not many people can say they do. No, absolutely right. Well, I wish you the very best of luck with it. Thank you. Somebody else was drinking. Yeah. 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 The idea of the seven mil, you can shoot two, three hundred yards. You need a four seventy to shoot an impala, don't you, Mike? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's a 470, Johnny? 470, fast up in the in the way it's ready for, uh, it's ready for finishing off.